A battery produces an electric current when its positive end, called the cathode, and its negative end, called the anode, connect via conductive pathway in the battery-operated device. This pathway conducts electricity when three components, two electrodes and an electrolyte, interact. These alkaline batteries are the rechargeable type. They last for years, depending on how you use them. The factory begins production by cutting nickel-plated steel into oval pieces, then gradually shaping each piece into a tube called a console. The console houses some important chemical ingredients. Graphite, which conducts electricity. Silver catalyst, which reduces chemical pressure buildup. Manganese dioxide, the main ingredient in the cathode. Barium sulfate, which binds the cathode ingredients. Zinc, the main ingredient in the anode. A gelling agent to keep the zinc particles suspended. And finally, potassium hydroxide, which interacts with electrodes to produce electricity. This 25-head press shapes the cathode's powdered chemicals into hollow pellets. The press churns out 25,000 pellets an hour. A machine called a console press then inserts three pellets into each console. Three because these pellets are so fragile that three smaller ones are easier to manipulate than one big pellet would be. Here's the insertion in slow motion. The next machine makes a ridge on one end of the console to help seal it. Plastic holders called pucks hold the console still as nozzles apply a sealant to the top, which is the negative end of the console. Next, they cut a roll of paper into small strips. These strips are called separators. They have microscopic holes that permit the flow of ions, electrically charged molecules, between the cathode and the anode. A hot melt glue machine deposits a small amount of glue into the separator, now rolled, and seals the positive end of the paper tube. The glue cools and hardens over the next minute and a half as the consoles move along a conveyor. The next machine injects an electrolyte, a potassium hydroxide solution. It takes nine minutes to soak through the separator liner into the cathode pellets. Nozzles then inject about 0.15 ounces of zinc gel into the anode cavity. Only about two-thirds of the gel weight is actually zinc. The other third is this company's closely guarded trade secret. It's what makes these batteries rechargeable. The zinc gives the gel its silver-gray color. A welding machine fuses one and a half inch nails onto the cap of the battery. This is where the current collects before it's discharged. The machine ejects the cap when finished and another machine inserts it into the negative end of the battery. This cap includes a safety feature crucial to rechargeable batteries. It can resist high pressure. But if heater power surges cause excessive pressure, a tiny vent prevents the battery from exploding. The machine folds over the console lip to enclose the contents. A rotating three-head crimping machine then makes a ridge in the finished battery to reduce the chance of leakage. An electrical testing machine contacts each battery for 200 milliseconds to ensure it has at least 1.5 volts. These batteries will be ready to use right away. No need to charge them first. The labeling machine uses light sensors to time the labeling of each battery casing. The plastic label lists technical information and adds additional insulation. Then, three seconds in an oven at 388 degrees Fahrenheit shrinks the labels to a tight fit.